Thanks for joining us on National Focus. I am Lurian Graham Carter. Coming up, PM Lord's budget transparency, knee and hip replacement surgery coming soon, and social services ministry looking out for senior citizens. Stay with us for the details of these and other stories after this. Think water, think life. Water refreshes, restores, cleans, and enhances growth. Potable water is a benchmark for development. Dewasco is serious about its mandate to ensure easy access to potable water island-wide and provide sewage services for a cleaner environment. Dewasco is your water and sewage company. Thank you for staying with us. The Honorable Minister for Finance, Prime Minister Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, has lauded the work of his government in producing a budget that directly responds to the needs of citizens through ongoing consultation. Throughout the year, government has met with a cross-section of groups and even individuals from the private sector and civil society to listen to their challenges and recommendations. Government has in turn created policies, programs and projects within the budget to address these needs. There is no time in our history in our country that governments will engage people on the preparation of the budget. Until this Labour Party came into office and we started the personal consultation. <laughs> government spent years in office and the only minister who would know what was contained in the budget was the Minister of Finance. And ministers of government in previous administrations would be hearing of the budget speech and the budget statements like everybody else. This Labour Party changed this and started consulting with a wide cross-section of society. Now, the consultation does not begin in May only. It is throughout. It is a continuous engagement. I believe I have met with the private sector and other civil societies more than anybody else in this country. Honorable Skerritt also touted his government for being the most prudent and transparent with the funds from the Citizenship by Investment program since the program's inception in 1993 and praised his administration for the proper management of the state's finances. And this is why the European Union have lauded us as being extraordinary in terms of being able to administer their funds and be able to account for their funds because they too send their own auditors to audit our programs in Dominica and we've always received received full marks. This is why the World Bank and the CDB are after us to lend money from them because of the extraordinary manner in which we've been managing their funds and be able to account to them. So the World Bank is literally begging us to get money from them. The CDB has, has already taken a decision at the board level to grant us a loan of US $30 million. So when people talk about, and this is based solely on the character of the government, the extraordinary good name that we have in the international regional community. Honorable Skerritt was speaking at the agreement signing ceremony between government and the aid bank for a special loan facility to unlend to farmers and hoteliers. And in other news, the Honorable Minister for Health, Dr. Kenneth Daru, has indicated that locals could soon access knee and hip replacement surgery right here in Dominica. He emphasized that government is working on the necessary adjustments to make these services locally accessible. We are also in the process of considering the purchase of this hip and knee replacement, Madam Speaker, at to the tune of U.S. $300,000. And this will be forwarded, of course, for approval. And what this will do, Madam Speaker, it will see that it will be available for orthopedic surgeons to perform these surgeries and reduce the cost, of course, incurred privately for these surgeries or having to travel overseas. Three orthopedic surgeons currently practice on the island. Jazz News will bring you more on that story when information becomes available. Meantime, there are nine new medical positions in the Ministry of Health. Apart from regularizing some of these positions, Madam Speaker, to make this doctors a bit more marketable, Madam Speaker, so they can now go to the bank, Madam Speaker, and, 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 get, and get a loan to build their homes, etc. It will have also released a number of other positions, such as internship positions, 
under which these doctors will be in paid man speaker in order to accommodate the flock of interns that we have coming in starting this year and we hope to see a serious influx of new interns over the course of the next few years. Provisions have been made for filling these new positions. The Ministry of Health and Environment is expected to spend $54.8 million in this fiscal year. And the Dominica Water and Sewage Company, the WASCO, has added two students to the list of scholarship recipients, bringing the current total to six. Jaden Austrian Al Bruno will be receiving school supplies with $750 annually. Public Relations Officer for the WASCO, Edward Bridges, described the significance of the scholarship program to the company. Today, the WASCO continues its thrust to positively impact the lives of Dominican youth, and by so doing, the future of the country. We at the WASCO are best known for the services we provide in supplying portable water and sewage services to the Dominican public. But today, we are delighted to serve the public in a different capacity, which forms part of our corporate responsibility. Two more young people will today join the Dawasco family of students who are excelling in their endeavors to achieve academically. So far, we have been very satisfied with the performances of our previous awardees who have all distinguished themselves at their schools. We look forward to the same and even better results from our new awardees. The program targets students who have received passes at the Grade 6 National Assessment and is awarded for five years. Customer Service and Human Resource Manager for the WASCO, Jeanette Elise, highlighted the importance of education. Education plays a very important role in national development. Education provides for the development of the human resource in every country and the human resource drives the implementation of programs and projects that are aimed to bring progress and prosperity. It is universally accepted that a trained workforce is vital to social and economic advancement at all levels. It is no secret that the government of Dominica has given top priority to the development of the human resource and we are all aware of the numbers, on initi numbers of initiatives which have been put in place by the government to improve the quality of life for all Dominicans. Education is, education is seen as a tool to fight poverty, and poverty has been impediment to the educational advancement of many persons, especially in the rural communities, and the eradication of poverty, poverty is key to national development. A close look at the distribution of the WASCO's awards revealed the scholarship have been spread amongst students living in rural communities. This reality is proof that through this scholarship, the WASCO is giving support to the vision of the government to eradicate poverty, to provide equal opportunities for all. An educated population is an asset to any nation and the achievement of overall goals and objectives. She had this advice for the students. My advice to the recipients of this scholarship is to take your studies seriously, because if you don't, you are likely to lose it. Your education is one of the few things that no one can take away, and any qualification obtained remains with you for a lifetime. So please work hard to make yourself family and country proud. Acting General Manager for the WASCO, Juliana Boston, hopes that the company's contribution will be a stepping stone on the awarded journeys towards higher education. The WASCO is proud to exercise its corporate responsibility as we support Dominican students in their journey towards improving their lives and their families. It was former South African President Nelson Mandela who said that education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. The truth of this statement rings true today as we seek to position students to play their part in preparing to shape a better world in the future. Who knows how far your education journey will take you? It is you as students who must decide your destiny. The WASCO is today betting on your success and investing in your ability to achieve. The school supplies we provide today and the further support we will provide as you continue your secondary education should serve as an inspiration to you to spur on 
towards positive goals. You should consider yourselves lucky to have been chosen from the field of so many who applied. I implore you, therefore, to make proper use of the investment Doasco is making into your future, be diligent in your studies, and ensure that you excel among your peers. We at Dawasco take very seriously our responsibility of managing Dawasco's water resources. Today, I call on you students and the general public to join us in our efforts to conserve and preserve our water resources. The new awardees, Jaden Austri, will be attending the Castle Brew Secondary School, while Al Bruno will be attending the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. Four of the previous scholarship recipients who have been promoted will continue to receive assistance. Naya Lockhart, who attends the Pierre Charles Secondary School, and Estelle Green, the Dominica Grammar School, will be going to third form. Zidane Lockhart, who attends the St. Mary's Academy, and Kamisha Eli, the Casabro Secondary School, will be moving up to second form. The students will retain their scholarships based on their performance. The Ministry of Social Services, led by Honorable Minister Lady Catherine Daniel, has been working for the well-being of the seniors of the island. She reported to the nation that quite some thought has been put into making life as comfortable as possible for the elderly and treating them with respect. In that regard, government has been consistently subsidizing the incomes of charitable organizations which care for the elderly. Our elderly today they're going through a lot of problems. We have heard of a lot of rape cases of our old people who live alone. And government is very cognizant of what is happening. We are very concerned. And that is why the government of Dominica has partnered with the Dominica Council on Aging to assist our elderly people. Government has allocated a million and fifty one thousand five hundred and thirty six dollars you have allocated that subvention annually to the various homes which is nine in total which take care of the elderly this year cabinet approved an additional support to the council on aging what we've done to ensure that they work effectively we have we have been paying there, we, we got an office for them, we have provided them with staff, which the government pays for, so that the care of the elderly is really fulfilled and the special needs and requirements are met. The Yes We Care program is a large project of the Social Services Ministry. Through it, seniors are fed and cared for in a variety of ways, from running their errands to personal hygiene. All of this at no cost to them, most of whom wouldn't be able to pay anyway. Often, these aged Dominicans have debilitating handicaps and no one to look in on them. At the start of the program in 2009, 186 elders were on the list. Due to families subsequently stepping in to take over the care of their relative and the passing of some, 161 are now receiving care through this government. The social services minister, like the rest of the DLP administration, is proud of this program. She only laments the reprehensible behavior of negligent families. We do all that. And when often we have had many cases where some of these people have passed and then their family come forward. We had problems during election the families are not there during election the family come forward to claim these people and madam speaker this is just not right this is just not right you cannot leave your mother or father in a state uncaring for her and at the time of the person's death you come and you give the biggest what is happy our party this is just not right. This is burning the resources of the state when you can subscribe to the well-being of your parents. And I think people who do that should stop because the resources of the state must go to good use. And if, if you, you have it, use it for the betterment of your parents. The caregivers of the program are also held in high regard, evidenced by the investment made in them.
taking care of the elderly is not simple saying simply saying i want to help the elderly and go and just put somebody there they have to be trained because there are certain skills that one requires in so doing you have to know how to lift the person you have to know how to bathe the person because you're talking fragile bones and everything so we do a lot of training and this is sustainable madam speaker training because from that training these people are equipped the skills that they and knowledge that can, they can find a job somewhere else they can transfer that skills because whatever you do in training with anybody you have given them skills that they can use for life the yes we care program spent eight hundred ninety seven thousand four hundred and thirty six dollars on salaries cleaning supplies and food in the previous financial year for this year a million dollars has been allocated you are watching national focus more when we return introducing the government of dominica internal directory mobile app available for download from the google play store one mobile market and the government of dominica's website access to all ministries and sub departments phone email and office addresses and websites simply select a ministry and the sub department you can dial directly from the app or save the numbers to your phone contacts it's convenience at your fingertips you have my passport ready for pickup good it really works download the government of dominica internal directory mobile app today welcome back dominica with a population of only 71,000, has one of the highest concentrations of centenarians per capita in the world on monday kodisha st louis attended the birthday celebration of eline laron the newest centenarian in atkinson and filed this report Today, the community of Atkinson joined in celebration with Valley Naron as she celebrated her 100th birthday, joining the ranks of the many centenarians on island. August 8th was a special day for the community of Atkinson as family members and friends celebrated 100 years with Valley Naron, the community's first centenarian. Laron brings the number of centenarians in Dominica for 2016 thus far to four. The ceremony began with a mass officiated by Reverend Father Conan Schillingford and Reverend Father Elvio Augustine. In attendance were His Excellency the President of Dominica, Charles Saver and Mrs. Saver, the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Kalinago Territory, Cassius Daru, and other invited guests. Granddaughter Kayla Tend gave the biography of Viley Narond. My granny, the last of eight children, was born to Francis Dura and Emmy Robes Dura on August 8, 1916. Following after Papa Doc, she was also involved in agricultural production as she made lime juice, cane juice, and cassava on her father's estate. When she wasn't farming or studying, or studying at Salivia Government School, she loved to do all styles of traditional dance, including mazouk, quadrille, heel and toe, lancers, and waltz. She especially loves Jinping music as she, played, as she played both the taboo and the gouache. At the age of 27, Granny married my grandfather, Sira Larond, at the Roseau Cathedral and traveled to Curacao as a young bride. The newlyweds lived on the island together before Granny returned to Dominica in 1944, nine months pregnant with her first child, Randall Larond, who was born on October 3rd. <laughs> Over the next 16 years, she would devote herself to being a mother as she gave birth to seven more children. Cyrilla, Shirley, Onal, Jennifer, Francis, better known as Kiki, Alexin, better known as Aka, and finally, my mom, Vailina. While raising her children, she became the village seamstress for many years, a trade that she learned from her late sister, Zila Dira Royer. She made hats with straw from Kalanago territory, wallets, wabdouillette, wedding dresses, and various other products. On top of that, she served two consecutive terms as a village council member and represented the council at a regional conference in St. Vincent. Even as a single mother, she continued to be an avid presence in the lives of her children and the affairs of the village. From her 60s up until the age of 95, when she could no longer travel, 
Granny spent her years between the U.S., Canada, and Dominica visiting her children and their families. His Excellency President of Dominica, Charles Saver, expressed his pleasure on the fact that the Laron family took such exceptional care of their matriarch and presented her with a letter from his family. Most definitely, the family has rallied around and ensured that she is well looked after and uh, that she enjoys the blessings that the good Lord has bestowed upon her of long life and that uh, let us all hope that she will be with us for many more years and to see her cousin uh, Aberfield and others also enjoy and celebrate the 100th anniversary. Parliamentary representative for the Kalinago constituency, Honorable Cassius Daru, also spoke on the life of the centenarian. We need to reflect on the life of our granny, for those who call her granny, and my friend, as I call her, but I call her mommy. We need to look at the spiritual aspect that she lived. Many times we see people, we visit them, but we don't ask questions. And so I believe we need to come back to basics and ask some questions that would really guide us as to how we live our own life. It is not just celebrating a birthday today, but it is celebrating a spiritual livelihood that we have in Atkinson and of course in the Salibia constituency. He called on nationals to take care of their elders following the example of the Laurent family. Many elders and many senior citizens today, they are not fortunate to receive such, such treatment. And to the Laron family, I want to say thank you for taking care of a golden individual in the society. According to the first vice president of the Dominica Council on Aging, Ivan de Joseph, Laron joined the ranks of centenarians to become the 26th centenarian on island. We are especially blessed in Dominica for having the most centenarians in this world per capita. There's no doubt about it. And we're wondering what it is that is so good that our people leave that length of time. Longevity is supreme in Dominica. But the reason for that, I guess, it's because their lifestyle, the way they lived. I am saying to Mrs. Laron how happy we are and we are very thankful for the Almighty for gracing us with you having batted for a hundred years. That is, a she's a centenarian, a centurion as well, for having scored 100 years. Give her a big hand for that. Laron received a give back, compliments the Dominica Council on Aging, as well as the Atkinson Village Council. Before the Labour Party administration, centenarians were not being recognized to this extent. Just recently, the entire community of Tedmon joined the family of John Baptist Watt to celebrate his 100th birthday on Friday, June 24th. On April 22nd, the community of Pebush celebrated 100 years with beloved mignonette Gis Banis. And Francette Drago from the community of Kalibishi celebrated 100 years on Tuesday, March 8th. The government of Dominica has stood by its commitment to centenarians. That includes free health care, $500 monthly, free cooking gas, and through the work of institutions such as the Dominica Council on Aging and the Social Welfare Department within the Ministry of Social Services, Family and Gender Affairs. For GIS News, I'm Kadisha St. Louis. Coming up, your Creole highlights with Mapfus and St. Louis. Hello tout le monde, bienvenue à cette nouvelle en créole, non moins c'est McPherson Sellos. Premièrement, management et banque bien plein pour collaborer et puis gouvernement engager un programme l'argent que gouvernement fait avec là pour secteur tourisme et puis agriculture, monde tape loan. Parole c'est là sur le chairman banque là, M. Martin Charles. Eh bien, il dit nous chanter avant, en nous heli huri, en nous heli bravo. Farmers et monde qui a business restaurant et l'hôtel, ils ont chanté, chanté ça, chanter, chanter ça aujourd'hui. Parce que le gouvernement montre nous tous les Dominicains qui ont fait des paroles. Le ministre a dit qu'il allait mettre l'argent et la banque pour nous aider ces farmers-là, ces restaurants-là, ces hôtels-là. 
Et aujourd'hui là, nous tapons l'argent là. Demain, il y aura venir côté aide bancaire vers plan yo pour nous ça garder plan yo pour yo ça avancer euh hôtel yo et femme yo et nous que il que fait nos plaisir pour travailler avec yo parce que quand premier ministre la, premier ministre l'a dit c'est pour avancer plus employment en pays là et nous que travailler avec ces hôtels là avec ces femmes là pour yo ça avancer pays là avec nous Charles expliquait les conditions selon cela, spécialement pour le secteur poultry. En histoire, Dominique, c'est la première fois que les hôteliers et les femmes ont tapé l'argent à 3%. Mm -hmm. Ces femmes-là, comme le ministère l'a dit, ont eu 6 mois avant de commencer à payer, mais en dedans de eux qui sont allés en dedans de poule et poule qui a qui est venu dans six mois, six, six, six semaines, six semaines. Et nous avons demandé ce monde là pour nous payer avant six mois. Là. Parce que nous avons déjà parlé de ce ces monde abattoir là. Nous avons eu un arrangement comme ces femmes là tenu avec DBMC avant. Quand nous vendons ces poules là, nous avons tiré l'argent, nous avons vu les banques et nous avons payé les restants. Si nous ni à Waj Masala en place déjà, nous avons qui est assez ces femmes là pour venir côté et banc, même demain, pour y ça parler de nous. A la nouvelle, la compagnie de Wasco a une fois encore continué et le programme a eu assisté à étudiants à l'école secondaire. Comme la coutume, la compagnie a eu des scholarships pour des étudiants. Officier relations publiques compagnie là Edward Regis fait parole qu'il y a bien plein l'année là encore engagé et puis programme là. Aujourd'hui nous bah les autres enfants l'école scholarship pour ça aller à l'école secondaire avec nous était bien content pour nous faire ça ça c'est troisième année nous nous avons le scholarship à l'école école avec nous bah des régions neuf monsieur Jaden Austri avec monsieur Al Bruno Um, Jaden Austri, ses enfants au monde qui travaillent en Dawasco, nous avons fait ça tous les années avec M. Um, Al Bruno, ses enfants au monde qui, qui sont en costume Dawasco. Avec, nous sommes bien contents pour nous, bah, M. Um, Al Bruno, scholarship ça, il a il y a des chances, vous connaissez les chances, c'est en place là, il y a des enfants qui 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 um, pani maman et papa avec um, yo ka ou tu pèse enfant qui tape ko yo en dans différentes positions qui difficile avec uh, les nos web ouais, application ça nous était bien content pour nous te parler parce qu'il fait bien en uh, examen avec nous tape ko nous nous te vle ende parce que il y a dans des positions difficiles ces scholarships là qu'a NSC étudiant là bien formidable. Comme ça, nous qu'a oui merci bon Dieu et ben nous qu'a oui merci um, manager um, d'Awasco parce que ces scholarships ça qu'a fait bien bas c'est les gens qui qu'a tapé bénéfice hardly. Et avec c'est les gens yo même qu'a fait très bien même 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 nous les gens qui qu'a sorti troisième, quatrième classe avec nous bien satisfait avec ça, avec nous qui dit pour continuer, pour um, faire ça et qu'a fait, avec pour mener bon résultat, résultats, bah nous, avec la croyance, la famille, parce que nous qui pensons que yo même um, qui sorti quand les gens qui fait en grande contribution à uh, bah, bah pays, avec qu'on nous dit, ce n'est pas pays à tout seul, la terre devant yo avec si yo ça fait bon contribution, bah la c'est même ça qui est bon avec nous en dehors parce que nous croutons qui nous a supporté yo quand yo qu'a allé devant avec 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 à l'école avec nous qu'a dit yo là yo besoin d'entendre yo ça a venu dans parce que nous qu'entendre yo nous là pour supporter yo avec merci merci pour parents yo merci pour yo même merci pour l'école yo teacher yo tout le monde qui qu'a entendu aussi mais c'est même ça c'est tout pour nouvelle en créole pour à présent non, moi, c'est Macfosson Saint-Lens. Au revoir. 
Here are six ways to make water a habit. Drink a glass of water with each meal. Carry a water bottle with you throughout the day. Keep your water on your desk at work. When you feel like a snack, try drinking water first. And instead of coffee and soft drink, drink water. Record the number of glasses you drink a day. That's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis.dominica.gov.dm or visit our website, news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow our Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on our past National Focus newscast on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is also available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News Protection Team, I'm Lorraine Graham Carter. Thanks for watching and join us again next time on National Focus.